Over the past two seasons, Arsenal have emerged from one of the very best teams in the Premier League. But to topple Pep Guardiola and his billion pound squad, Arteta has got to get every single advantage that he can muster. One advantage that Arsenal have been really working on is dead ball situations, adding goals from corners, free kicks and even throw-ins. Since the start of last season, Arsenal have scored 35% more goals than any other Premier League side. But how have the Gunners become the best dead ball team in the country. Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today I'll be answering that question. So strap on in, like the video, subscribe if you're new. Let's get this party started. First up, Arsenal have built a pretty big starting lineup. William Saliba, Gabriel and Declan Rice are all physically very powerful. But Arsenal also have Ben White, Kai Havertz and Jakob Kivior, all over six foot tall. Whilst players like Gabriel Jesus and Leandro Trossard aren't afraid to get stuck in. The result is an aggressive squad who challenge well for aerial duels. But Arsenal aren't just a big team with good delivery, the Gunners have a secret weapon. And his name is Nicholas Jova. Born in Berlin, Nicholas Jova is a 42 year old set piece specialist. He started life in his professional career at Montpellier. In 2016, he left Montpellier and joined Brentford to become Dean Smith's assistant. In 2019, Jova joined Manchester City as a set-piece specialist, working alongside Pep Guardiola and Mikel Arteta. In Jova's first season at the Etihad Stadium, Manchester City scored the most goals from set pieces in the Premier League and conceded the second fewest. After two seasons at Manchester City, Jova was poached by Mikel Arteta and became Arsenal's dedicated set piece coach. Since his appointment, the Gunners have scored 49 goals from set pieces, the most of any Premier League side, but also more than any individual Arsenal player. What's more impressive is the improvement at Arsenal. The season before Jova's appointment, Arsenal had scored just six goals from set pieces, the second worst record in the entire league. After his appointment, they're averaging 16 goals per season, with at least 15 goals each year scored from set pieces. So why have set pieces become so valuable to Arteta's Arsenal? Before the winter break, Declan Rice had taken just five corners. After the winter break, in this insane goal scoring run, Declan Rice has taken 22 corners, which has got himself four assists. Declan Rice's delivery is a big part, but also Arsenal's overall setup is brilliant. With the same two players delivering in-swingers from either side, Arsenal have made their set-piece approach a lot more reliable with consistent takers. But whilst the good delivery has been important, it's what's happened inside the box that has led to the Gunners scoring so many goals. Like most teams, Arsenal have a playbook of routines, but only the very best are drilled as well as the Gunners. Their consistent setup is to load the box with five good aerial attackers, usually William Saliba, Gabriel, Ben White, the centre-forward and the central midfielder, whilst three strong technical players lurk on the edge of the box. One of these players can offer a short option, which naturally takes a defender away from defending the box. As mentioned earlier, Arsenal take in-swinging corners, so the opposition goalkeeper can be a real problem if they're able to challenge for the ball. To counter this, Arsenal use Ben White as a constant blocker on the goalkeeper, preventing them from claiming the in-swinging deliveries. One of the most popular ways of defending set pieces in the modern era is for the defending team to position their strongest aerial defenders in a line or staggered along the six yard box, with each player defending their zone and attacking the ball if it enters it. The rest of the players are then used as man markers or blockers to try and prevent the attacking players from getting a free header. Arsenal deal with this hybrid approach by bunching their attackers up or by staggering them in distant positions, making it difficult for the opposition to block them before they can build momentum. But depending on the style of defending they face, as well as the individual strengths and weaknesses of their opposition, Arsenal will look to target specifics when creating from corners. Against the zonal team, they'll identify the zone being defended by the weakest player. Then they'll look to overload that zone, either by creating a physical mismatch with one of Arsenal's centre-backs, a dynamic overload by getting a run and jump on the defender, or by simply creating a numerical advantage. Then it comes down to signalling and delivery. The taker will signal to their teammates, which will trigger their movement and if the delivery is good, Arsenal will generally create a high quality of chance. A great example of this can be seen in William Saliba's opening goal in the 6-0 drumming of West Ham United. Arsenal targeted the weakest aerial defenders of West Ham, they blocked the goalkeeper and they blocked a key defender. So West Ham United in the Premier League this season, they play a zonal defence from corners with their three best headers of the ball in the central areas. 
Johnson, Zuma and a guard. What Arsenal do in this situation is brilliant. Not only do they collapse West Ham's zonal defence, but they create a mismatch at the back post. They create an overload that's dynamic, that's physical, that's qualitative and overall is a perfect overload for these corner situations. So when we're looking at the, the setup that Arsenal do have from corners, they usually attack where they overload the back post at the start. They have decoys in this this goal, Trossard is the decoy or run to the near post, basically to try and confuse the West Ham defence. They're focusing on a player coming across the zonal line or is he going to attack the ball? Is this dropping to the near post? But Arsenal are targeting that back post area. We've got four really physical Arsenal players in Gabriel, um, Kai Havertz, William Saliba and Kivor. Of course, Ben White is going to do his naughty job of blocking Areola, getting out to the ball. Why that's really important is because in-swingers are easily gobbled up if a keeper can get a free run and catch the ball. But moving forward to the corner, a good corner starts with good signalling and we can see Declan Rice raise his arm. Arsenal's players will be set in motion when his arm comes down, which leads to creating a situation where you can work on this in training over and over again. It's almost like a dance. Arm goes down, players start in motion, they go to the correct areas. Trossard moving to the near post, Ben White blocking the goalkeeper and you'll see Kivor enter the shot. What he's going to do is he's going to push a guard a little bit closer to Kurt Zuma. He's going to narrow the zone between those two players, basically stopping a guard, attacking the ball, opening space for William Saliba to have a direct battle with Addison Alvarez. When you look at the physicality between the two, William Saliba is six foot four, 92 kilograms, versus Edison Alvarez, six foot one, 73 kilograms. This is a physical mismatch. But not only that, William Saliba gets the jump on him by blocking him, by holding him down with his arm which creates a simple goal for Arsenal to score. What I like about Arsenal's set piece is they usually have the goal scoring part of the pitch. So they usually have a decoy. This time it was Trossard decoying to the near post. But the part of the, the penalty area where they want to score the goal, they usually load two players. Usually it's William Saliba or Gabriel and Kai Havertz. We can see Havertz jumping for this ball at the moment and Gabriel is ready to deal with the, the second ball or if the cross is over hit to put it back into a dangerous area. But we can see the physical mismatch when we zoom in. Kivor is very physical with a guard. He's moving him out of position and then William Saliba comes across. Here's where he gets his arm across uh, Edison Alvarez, gets the height and heads it into the back of the net to give Arsenal a crucial first goal. But it's so, so good. They're using so many different things. Blockers in um, swinging deliveries, decoy runs and overloading a certain area of the goal and playing over a zone. The perfect answer to a zonal defence to create separation for their attackers. They'll do this through blockers who will get themselves in between a marker and their own player. Alternatively, the blocker will position themselves in the defender's path, slowing them down and creating separation for their key attacker. Key blockers when facing a man-to-man -man system, including the goalkeeper, who's blocked by Ben White, and the best aerial defender, who are often left to focus on defending the middle of the box rather than man-marking an opponent. Arsenal will also create separation with a man-marking system with decoy runs to try to take the attention of the defenders away from the location of where the ball is actually getting delivered to. Like when facing zonal systems, signalling and delivery from the corner taker is key. But if it's well executed, Arsenal able to consistently create dangerous opportunities Opportunities through their depth of strong aerial attackers. A great example of Arsenal exploiting a man-to-man -man system came in Arsenal's 5-0 win over Crystal Palace with Gabriel grabbing the opening goal of the game. And there are some similarities between these two goals. It's again an in-swinging cross from the left-hand side from Declan Rice. Again, we can already see Ben White uh, blocking the goalkeeper. But what I like about this is the decoy. That's a little bit more crucial in this goal. And as well, you've pinned the zonal defender. So we don't actually see man-to-man -man schemes in the Premier League as every single player picking up a man. We see a mix when teams play man-to-man -man, where you have zonal defenders. Here we've got Mateta dealing with the near post um, and Wacky Anderson dealing with a real dangerous um, part of the, the penalty area from an expected goals perspective. But what I like about this is the use of a decoy run. We're going to see two players attack the near post and a third make a motion to but actually block Wacky Anderson, one of their key aerial zonal defenders. So the similarities between the previous set piece, both in swinging, both of the times Declan Rice uses his arm to go up and then dropping it down to start the players in motion. But what you'll see is William Saliba attack the near post, Gabriel attack the near post, Trossard make a motion to it and then basically block off Anderson. What this means is you create a really nice pocket of space at the back post to attack with two players. 
So that causes massive problems in the Crystal Palace man-to-man -man scheme. But also, if we take a look at Gabriel focusing on the Arsenal number six at the edge of the box, he's bouncing side to side. He's getting picked up by Richards at the moment. I'd already calls, call that a bit of a mismatch from a physicality perspective. But the way that Gabriel separates with the kind of motion that you see when he's bouncing from side to side and then exploding on the outside exactly at the right time. We talk about signaling. The reason why it's so important is so this can happen. As soon as a corner's taken, as soon as Rice has kicked the ball in that millisecond, Gabriel has escaped his marker. He's created separation, which arguably leads to the goal. We can also see Trossard blocking Anderson to create that area just um, sort of to the right of the, the box, the penalty area. Again, Lamine has been beat, beaten by Kai Havertz. Again, Arsenal have got two players attacking a zone. Gabriel rises, gets up and heads the ball home. Other key parts of the move, of course, we mentioned Ben White. is completely blocking uh, Dean Henderson. Dean Henderson can't come out and deal with the in-swinger because Ben White backing up into him and it just creates a perfect situation you know really good uh, way of attacking a man-to-man -man scheme creating a little separation or dismarking by one of the key players decoy runs to the near post creating space at the back post for Gabriel to get up and score a really important goal for Arsenal Arsenal probably one of the best teams in set pieces that I have ever seen up there with Brentford not only are Arsenal excellent from corners but their approach from indirect free kicks is very good too where the free kick is one influences the type of delivery and setup that Arsenal deploy, although there are some constants. Arsenal tend to load four of their biggest aerial threats into the box, usually Saliba, Gabriel, White, and either Kai Havertz or the centre forward, whilst the wingers take up their natural positions in the wide areas. Two players usually support the set piece from the edge of the box, about 10 yards in front of the defensive line, whilst one player is deployed in a safety role to regain clearances or provide cover against the counter-attack. Free kicks one in the wide areas near the touchline see the Gunners deploy a similar methodology to their corners. Deliveries are generally in-swingers, with right-footers taking the free kicks from the left and left-footers taking the free kicks from the right. Meanwhile, inside the box, Arsenal's aerial threats tend to take up positions at the back post, where it's more difficult to mark them without weakening the central space. This back post position also gives them the space to build momentum when they're attacking the middle of the box or the front post, creating a dynamic advantage for the Gunners. It also gives them positional and numerical advantages for any deliveries to the back post. Free kicks one in deep central areas that are too far from goal to take a shot generally see outswinging deliveries, with left footers on the left and right footers on the right. Inside the box, Arsenal's aerial threats generally bunch up together but take up different positions depending on which zone Arsenal want to attack. While signalling is important for all dead balls, Arsenal's indirect free kicks are even more reliant on good signalling. Not only do the takers use stutters to catch the defending team out, but more importantly, Arsenal's aerial threats always start in offside positions, forcing the defending team to drop the defensive line if they want a man mark, which gives them a greater margin of error for the delivery. However, usually teams will hold their line to try and play them all offside, but it is exactly what the Gunners want. When when the set-piece taker ends their signal and begins their run-up, Arsenal's attackers rush back into an onside position, but crucially they back into the opposition defenders. This puts them off balance and makes it more difficult for them to drop back to defend, with Arsenal's attackers almost acting as their own blockers, although Arsenal's aerial threats do act as blockers for the biggest targets to open up a zone for an overload. Backing in also puts the attackers into an explosive position, allowing them to burst off the line quickly and create even more separation from their markers. Whilst the Gunners haven't scored bucketfuls of goals from indirect free kicks like they have done with corners, they still create very good chances. And take the 1-1 draw with Liverpool at Anfield, where their effectiveness was really on show from indirect free kicks. Not only did Gabriel score from an outswinging free kick from deep, creating separation with himself and Canate, but Gabriel Jesus made a block which created a 2v1 for Kai Havertz and Big Gabby. But there were other deep free kicks that could have resulted in goals with a better delivery. Virgil van Dijk, probably the most powerful defender in the Premier League, turned to pulling back Gabriel as he tried to stop the big Brazilian getting onto a ball to the back post. Arsenal were very good from set pieces last year, however this season they're by far the best team in Europe, but scoring from set pieces is just the start. A big area where the Gunners had struggled is when they came up against teams who part the bus. And after their success from last season, Arsenal have encountered this tactic a lot more in this campaign. 
Doubling up on Arsenal's danger men made life difficult, and despite getting over the line with a goal or two, the Gunners didn't look like their squash-buckling side who finished second. Whilst Arteta has different setups and tactics to change it, set pieces are a good way to make use of Arsenal's physically imposing team. Set pieces also counter the tough tackling tactics that are often seen alongside low block football, giving Arsenal's attackers an extra half a yard to make something happen. If Arsenal can take the lead in matches, the opposition have to come out to attack, which results in two things. Number one, the team has to stop parking the bus, giving Arsenal more space to create from. And number two, by chasing the game and committing more players to the attack, the opposition leaves space that Arsenal can counter-attack into. And these two things have come together in Arsenal's current hot streak. And incredibly, the Gunners have gone ahead through a set piece in four out of the last seven Premier League games. And what's more, in each of these matches, Arsenal have scored a goal on the counter-attack. What's more important to remember is that whilst Arsenal are expected to beat these teams on this incredible run, they've recently struggled against these sides. Newcastle frustrated them last season with a 0-0 draw thanks to Newcastle's low block. This season, very different, as Sven Botman own goal opened up the scoring, which was a result of a Saka corner. Nottingham Forest won both encounters at the city ground, but quick thinking from Alexander Zinchenko released Gabriel Jesus behind the defence with a clever, quick throw to open up the scoring this year. Albeit not the go-ahead goal, but we saw a similar goal of throwing into the channel against Burnley for the fifth goal, as Kivior released Kai Havertz in behind the defence, who beat a defender, then slotted the ball home. In fact, Arsenal have scored the most goals directly from throw-ins in the Premier League this season. But back to Arsenal's struggles, the Gunners have just won one of the last four trips away to West Ham, and West Ham had beaten Arsenal 2-0 at the Emirates 45 days before they welcomed them to the London Stadium. Arsenal put on a set-piece masterclass with William Saliba scoring the go-ahead goal as Arsenal recorded their biggest ever win over the Hammers. The West Ham games are actually great examples to highlight the impact of Arsenal's set-piece goals can have on a game plan. In the 2-0 win at the Emirates, West Ham had just 26% of the ball, but thanks to their early goal, the Hammers were able to basically defend and nullify Arsenal for 90 minutes. And you can see from the average positions where the defenders and midfielders are close together, with only Jared Bowen in the Arsenal half. But in the 6-0 defeat, West Ham started in the same way, averaging 30% possession in the opening half an hour, taking one shot to Arsenal's 10. But an opening goal from a set piece from William Saliba on the 32nd minute completely changed things. This forced West Ham to come out their compact block and leave space for Arsenal to exploit, and this can be seen by the average positions. Not only have the Gunners scored the most goals from set pieces this season in the Premier League, but they've actually scored more goals from fast breaks in 25 games than they managed in the entirety of last season. For Arsenal, set pieces are like an extra 20 goal a season player, and snagging the first goal from a dead ball situation gives more space for Arsenal to unleash their attacking freedom, which has led to some massive score lines. If Arsenal can maintain this form from set pieces, they will take some stopping. But anyway, guys, what have you made of Arsenal's set pieces this season? Get into the comments below. And do you think they'll continue scoring at such a high rate? Or will teams start to figure them out? I've been Statman Dave. Subscribe if you new and like the video. And we will see you next time. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?